and in helping this we discuss ascariasis okay. ascariasis okay so now we will begin with the life cycle of the plasmodium children plasmodium the causal organism i hope you'll have noted now today we will start with the life cycle of the plasmodium which is very very important at what stage i told you that plasmodium is completing its life cycle in two hosts so tell me with two what are those two hosts in which the plasmodium completed completes its life cycle Ma'am, human and female animals, mosquito. And mosquito. So, which mosquito? Any mosquito? Ma'am, female anopheles mosquito. Female anopheles mosquito. Okay. So now, all of you are note down. Put today's date, and we will start with the life cycle of Plasmodium. life cycle of plasmodium now rumisha will ask a few questions related to the topics which we have done in the previous classes to raj quickly now start causal organisms of pneumonia I frame the question properly rumisha mam causal organism of pneumonia Ha, name the causal organism of pneumonia. Ask the question is for Raj. Raj. So hurry up now, Raj. Ma'am, Streptococcus pneumonia and Haemophilus influenzae. Rumisha, you are a quiz master. Correct answer. Uh, okay. Now, next question quickly. Five Shavani, questions to ask. Shavani huh. tells us symptoms of uh, pneumonia. High fever, chills, cough, uh, then sometimes uh, lethargy or coma, and in severe cases, lips and fingernails turn gray to blue. Yes, Rumisha. Barbie. Your uh, opinion is wrong. Uh, correct, correct answer. Correct answer. Barbie, okay. my next question is to you. What uh, What is the mode of transmission of pneumonia? Through inhalation of infectious droplets produced by the person which is suffering from it. Then sneezing, coughing, or laughing, it can transmit the pneumonia. Ne, uh, correct answer. Neha, my next question is to you. Uh, name the causal organism and mode of transmission of viral disease, common cold. Causal organism of common cold is rhinovirus, and its mode of transmission is. Uh, Droplets from cough or sneezes of an infected person, which are either inhaled directly or transmitted through the objects touched by the uh, infected per person, and then it goes to the healthy person. Very good. Now the questions will be asked by Shravani. Five questions from Shravani side. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ritu, uh, can you tell the uh, mode of transmission of common, uh, sorry, uh, the symptoms of common cold? Nasal congestion and discharge, sore throat, harshness, cough, head, and tiredness. Okay. My next question will be uh, tell the uh, the causal organism of uh, amoebiosis. Okay, causal organism of amoebiosis. Hmm. 
Barbie. So it's Ecta Amoeba then with Ecta Amoeba Histolytica then Plasmodium uh, and Ecta Amoeba Histolytica the causal organism. Ant Amoeba, what is it? Ant Amoeba Histolytica. Okay, just uh, wait now for the next question. Neha, now you will be presenting the screen and you share the life cycle of the plasmodium. So from the net you can take up, which is given in the NCRT only the same figure and present it on the screen. And then we will be discussing it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ha, continue now, Shravani. This is your question. Uh, Rumisha, can, Rumisha, can you tell me the symptoms of amoebiosis? amoebiosis? Constipation, abdominal pain, cramps, mild diarrhea, dysentery, blood and mucus in the stool. Yes, right. Now, uh, Raj, can you tell me the mode of transmission of malaria? Raj? Raj is not there in the class. Um, he is there in the class. Ah, nee, but he's not means he's not in front of the computer. Devanshi, can you answer the same question? Malaria is transmitted by the bite of an infected female Anopheles mosquito or by blood transfusion mother to the growing fetus. Yes. And through uh, sharing syringes also. Now, see, children, one thing I want is that everyone should be able to remember that the causal organisms which you have discussed, they are whether bacteria, they are whether fungi, or they are viruses. Is it clear? The, in the board examination, they ask the question like that only, they will be framing the uh, one table in which they'll write down the name of the disease, then the causal organism, then the category or the group. So whether ant amoeba is a plant, amoeba is a bacteria or a fungi or a virus. Okay, so that way you will have to mention and then the symptom will be there. So if they ask in that pattern, everyone should know whether ant amoeba is a bacteria or a fungi or a protozoa. So can Barbie tell that what is plasmodium or ant amoeba? They fall in which group? They belong to which group of organisms? Barbie. Then parasite. No parasite. So all organisms will be called parasite. Why we will call all parasite? Because they are living inside any living host. Okay. And so they all are parasites. Huh? Non protozoa. Protozoa. Okay. They are ant amoeba and plasmodium. Both are the protozoans. Okay. So now, Neha, are you ready with the figure? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you can share. Now, all of you all will be seeing this figure. You can open your textbook also if you wish, children, so that you can keep marking in the textbook and if you, you can keep writing in the textbook if you wish. Okay, and this is very important for your board examination that what are the different stages of the life cycle of plasmodium. Now, in the figure, children, you can see very clearly that they have shown the two different stages, two different hosts. One is the mosquito and another one is the human host. 
Now we start with the hand which is shown there, children. So there you can see that hand is shown with the mosquito biting. Now once the mosquito, that is the infected mosquito, the mosquito which is carrying the plasmodium, the parasite, will bite any human being, will inject inside the body. Can you see here the next stage? So you label it as A, B, C, D, children. So that will be very easy for you to explain. What also A stage, which one you will be taking? A, which one you will be taking? Mosquito hand. bite. Uh -huh, biting, uh -huh, biting one hand. Okay. So now, after this biting, it will enter into the bloodstream and then where it will be reaching. Can you see the second one, the B stage? We will be moving clockwise, which is reaching which organ? Liver. Liver. Now, what will happen in the liver? Now, can Rumisha tell? Read out what is written there, Rumisha. So one by one, you will be telling and you will be understanding this. And at the end, I want one student to explain the whole life cycle. So be very careful and attentive. So in the liver, what is happening now? Ma'am, those yes. porozoids uh -huh. are entering into the liver through the blood uh -huh. and okay. are uh, multiplying. Okay, so in the liver cells, now try to understand the sporozoids which have entered the body of the host, that is the human being, they, have, they are reaching the liver cells. And in the liver cells, they will be multiplied. So sexually or asexually, Rumisha? Asexually. Asexually. Okay. Now continue, uh, Ritu, where they are reaching further. What they are showing in the C stage. Read out. Ma'am, the parasite reproduces of sexually in liver cells, but the uh -huh. cells and releasing into the blood. Okay. So further, when the multiplication will take place, try to understand, children, that the liver cells will rupture and they will be released. And further, they will be then infecting the, they will infect which cells? So you mark it A, B, C, and then D. In the D stage now, what is happening, Barbie? Ah, Barbie, quick now. Barbie is not able to switch on and switch off the mic quickly. Neha, can you say? Ma'am, in the D stage, parasites reproduce asexually in red blood cells, bursting yes. the red blood yes. cells and causing cycles of fever and other symptoms. Release parasites infect new red blood cells. La right. So you will find that once they reach the blood cells, they start infecting the blood cells. After they have reached the, means the number has increased first where? In the liver cells. Then the large number which will be released, they'll start infecting the blood cells. And once they reach the blood cells and they start uh, multiplying inside the, the, uh, the uh, blood cells, there only they are producing a toxin. So that toxin name, you can write it there itself that it produces the hemozoin. What is the toxin? In this stage only where all this description is written, you can write out, they produce the toxin substance that is the hemozoin. And that hemozoin, H-A-E-M-O-Z-O-I-N, hemozoin will cause these cycles of fever. Okay, now I want Devanshi to tell. Quick now. So till here, I think the reproduction is going sexually or asexually. Devanshi, my question. Ma'am, now they will uh, divide by sexual reproduction. Sexual stage gametocytes will form and develop into uh, red blood cells. Develop in red blood cells. Right. Okay. So, abhi tak asexual reproduction ho raha hai, lekin now they will form the gametes. They will form gametes where they form the gametes the male and female gametes will be formed where yes they want she continue in rbc in the rbc okay now what will happen further 
the next stage is which one now f stage okay in the f stage devanshi what will happen ma'am the female mosquito takes up the gametocytes with the blood meal now try to understand children that that person may be bitten by the female anopheles mosquito now once it will bite the mosquito you know mosquitoes will suck the blood okay and in the blood only they will have these gametes so the gametes will reach the mosquito's body now is it clear so you will find at this stage in the gamete stage the plasmodium is entering into the mosquito's body and now the fusion of the gametes will occur where devanshi tell in mosquito's gut ha ah, in the mosquito's gut the fertilization process will occur so that way they can ask that where the fertilization of the gametes of the plasmodium occurs so where it occurs in mosquito's devanshi, gut ha ah, okay so all of you all have understood this much now what will happen shravani will say Ma'am, further the mature infective stages, that is, the sporozoids will escape from the gut and migrate to the mosquito mosquito salivary glands. Salivary glands. So the sporozoids formed after the fertilization will reach the salivary gland. Then what will happen? Ma'am, again the ma'am again the cycle continues. Ha, ah, the the same mosquito. which is having these sporozoids in the salivary gland will bite another human being and will inject the sporozoids so this way you find the life cycle of the plasmodium is completed in two different hosts the asexual cycle occurs in the human body and the sexual cycle will be completed or the sexual recipe way sexual reproduction will be done in the in the ritu ritu sexual reproduction of the plasmodium will be done where from in the blood cell sexual reproduction where so ritu was not attentive now ritu will explain the whole life cycle of the plasmodium raj can you tell where the sexual reproduction occurs ma'am red blood cells yes um, red blood cells no in the red blood cell so you find only gametes are formed na but fertilization and the sporozoid formation occurs where ma'am mosquitoes gut mosquitoes gut okay and in which stage it reaches the salivary glands ritu now in the second last stage last stage ah. and so that you will say who can answer quickly who can correct it anyone can unmute the mic and quickly speak up Ma'am, in the sporozoid stage. In the sporozoid stage, it will enter the salivary gland. Okay. So now I want Rumi Shah to explain the whole of the life cycle of the plasmodium. Summarize it, Rumi Shah, and other students will quickly write it in their notebook. Whatever we have discussed, you write it. Plasmodium completes the life cycle in two different hosts. Number one, so that way you can write down. One is the human body, and the second one, the female Anopheles mosquito. Then you start with the mosquito bite, the female Anopheles mosquito biting the human being. Okay, so Rumisha, now continue. When the mosquito, female Anopheles mosquito, bite a human, a sporozoids are injected with its bite. Okay. And the sporozoids reaches to our Uh, liver through the blood and then started reproducing asexually and busting the cells and released 
and released into the blood. Okay. Then these parasites reproduce asexually in the RBCs, busting the red blood cells and causing cycles of fevers and over symptoms and other symptoms. Release parasite infect new uh, RBCs. These uh, cycle of fevers Very are good. caused by a toxic substance, hemozoin. Yeah. Uh, then the cycle will move further and uh, uh, the mosquito will, as the mosquito will bite the human, the sexual uh, reproduction will take place in the body of the mosquito. Okay. So in the RBCs only what they have formed, that also you have to tell. Gametocytes are formed in the RBCs ah. and okay. then as mosquito will bite the human again, uh, the gametocytes yeah. will enter into that mosquito uh, through its blood meal. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then fertilization and development of these gametocytes will take place in the mosquito's gut. Huh? Then it will uh, the mature infective stage that is sporocytes, sporozoites, no, sporozoites. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Escape from the gut and migrate to mosquitoes' salivary glands. Uh, they will reach to the salivary glands of the mosquito. And okay. from there, they will again be transferred to the human as it bites the human. And so on, okay. the cycle will continue. That's way the cycle will continue. Okay. So now, I hope everyone has understood what is the life cycle of the plasmodium. Now, children, they never ask to draw the life cycle of the plasmodium. But they, they may give the cycle and they may give that you just, uh, some questions may be put up that you give the answers what are the different stages to label and a b c d they may ask and the questions can be asked that way but they never ask to draw the diagram but i would like you all to draw the diagram of this life cycle of the plasmodium in your notebook okay now i want ritu ritu will ask few questions to barbie Ma'am, related to this cycle? Yeah, related to this cycle of plasmodia. Just five questions, quick five questions. Which toxic, uh, toxic substance is responsible for the uh, fever with chin? Okay. Ma'am, chemo to Ah, louder. Hemozoin. Okay. Fast rapid fire with two. Be quick. Um the paras uh, when the parasite multiply to sporozoids, uh, to form sporozoids where they are stored. They first multiply in the liver cell, then they go to the blood cell, then the breast. Yeah. Ritu, what is the answer? I'm salivary gland. Barbie, you try to understand the question now. What is the up? You never got the question. Ritu, repeat your question. When the parasites multiply to form sporozoids where they are stored. Bandi, you got the question or Yes, ma'am. Ah, so what is the answer now? That's a live plan of the mosquito. Ah, they will be the sporozoids will be stored in the salivary gland of the mosquito. Okay, now next question quickly with two. Where the parasites initially multiply? In the RBC. No. Repeat your question. Ma'am, where the parasites initially multiply? Initially means what?
may have just to modify the question. Uh, where does the multiplication of parasite occurs first in the life cycle of Plasmodium? Liver cell. Okay. Very good. So how many questions, Ritu? Ma'am, three. Three questions. Leave it now. Raj will ask the two questions. Fast. And questions will be answered by Bhargi only. Quick now, Raj. Raj is not attending the class. How many students have noted very nicely in the notebook this whole thing? Devan, she noted? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Shravni, the whole life cycle is clear to you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so now Raj is not asking the questions. Shravni will ask the questions to Barbie. Yes, ma'am. Barbie, in uh, which stage does asexually the plasmodium reproduce? Yes, Barbie, quick round. I mean, we have completed the whole life cycle, means you are not learning the things. Which cells it is multiplying asexually? Devan, she will give the answer quick. Ma'am, in the liver cells, and after that in the RBCs. Right. Okay, in the liver cells and the RBCs, they are multiplying, they are dividing asexually. Okay. Now, next question, Shabni. Uh, in the mosquito, the fertilization occurs where? Okay. In the mosquito gut? Yes, right. Correct. Okay. So I hope now you have understood the questions and uh, the whole life cycle is clear to you all. Now, I want Shravni to take up the next disease. Quick now. Which is the next disease? See in the textbook and tell me the next disease which you have to understand. Ma'am, uh, we have completed with uh, the diseases like amoeba, amoebiosis, and ascaresis uh, that have given in the test book by their symptoms and contamination. Okay. Now tell me what is filarial worm? What is the scientific name of the filarial worm? Quick now. I want you to open the textbook and keep on answering the questions. What is filarial worm scientific name? And note it in your notebook. Yeah. Huh. Note it in your notebook now. Okay, ascariasis. Uh, we have discussed that ascariasis causes. You can write down the nematodal diseases. Now you have to do the nema. So the protozoan diseases we have completed. We start with the nematodal diseases. So nematodal diseases too you have to study. One is ascariasis and the other one is filariasis. Okay, so ascariasis is caused by the ascaris. And the other one, filariasis, and they all cause, so ascariasis I have already discussed, they cause the malnutrition. Now filariasis, the scientific name you have to remember. What is the scientific name of the filarial worm? And how it infects the person? Rumisha got it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ah, say quickly then. The scientific name of filariasis is elephantiasis. Oh, oh, sorry, worm, worm, worm. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, okay. The causal organism of filariasis is. Ha, okay, right. Ha. Say, say. What is the causal organism? No, I'm not able to pronounce that word. Okay, Neha, can you pronounce it? Break the word. Break the um, word. Which area? Which area? R E R I A, it must be. Isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so it is which area? Ah, then the species also you name. Given or ma'am, yes, ma'am. Which area Bancrofty and which area Melaid? 
Malai. Okay, which area Bancrofty and which area Malai? M A L A I. Okay, so these names are uh, very interesting. Try to learn it by heart. Okay, so now uh, Shabli will uh, repeat the names. The cause of organism of phyllaceous. Ma'am, it is Vucher area. Huh? It has two species, Vucher area Bancrofty and Vucher area Malai. Okay, all have understood. Devanshi, repeat it quickly. The names of the causal organism. Ma'am, Vucher area and uh, Vucher area Bancrofty and Vucher area Malai. Okay, now tell me, Rumisha, quickly how it enters the human body. How it enters the human body? Rumisha, where they are present, these worms are present where and how they enter the human body? I said to read the pages, so you all have not read it or what? Yes, Rumisha. Neha, can you answer? Ma'am, by the bite of female mosquito vectors. Okay, vectors. And where they are present? Carrier is that. Okay. And symptoms now? Chronic inflammation of organs, usually the lymphatic vessels of lower limbs. Uh, so remember, children, this disease is also called elephantiasis. The common name which everyone knows by that is the elephantiasis. So in this, the limbs become elephant-like. And why they become elephant-like? Because the organs, the limbs get filled with the lymph the fluid is filled and that's why the size of the limbs increases abnormally so you may see you must be seeing the picture of the person suffering from the elephantiasis and this disease cannot be cured then once it gets infected and gradually you'll find the size of the limbs will go on increasing and why does it happen neha why the size is increasing And due to the vectors. No, no, organ which is getting infected. What you said just now, say, say the same thing. And the what chronic inflammation said? of organs, mainly the uh, lymphatic vessels of the lower limbs. Lymphatic vessels. The inflammation of the lymphatic vessels, write it children quickly, that inflammation of the lymphatic vessels are leading to the enlargement of the limbs and the other organs. Is it clear? So this worm is causing the inflammation of the, so means that these worms are infected, infecting which system of the body? Which system of the body is getting infected? Lymphatic system. Lymphatic system. Is it clear to everyone? So the system which is getting infected by these worms, it is the lymphatic system. So it's already 33 children. We'll be meeting again in the next period. That is the third period. Now, uh, Neha can stop sharing. You can stop sharing, and now we will be okay. So we'll moving. Uh, we'll be moving ahead with the other topics in the next video. So let us do Shanti part. Raj was not there in the class or what? Raj, can you speak up now? Are you there listening or not? Yes, ma'am. So, फिर बीच में बोलते क्यों नहीं हो राज आप? वो कभी-कभी नेटवर्क लॉस्ट हो जाता है इसीलिए अच्छा मतलब जब क्वेश्चन पूछे जाते हैं तभी आपका लॉस्ट होता है दिस शुड नॉट हैपन बिकॉज़ आई वांट ईच एंड एवरी स्टूडेंट टू स्पीक अप इन द क्लास ओके आई एम कीप नोटिंग द थिंग्स आर यू नोटिंग राइट यस मैम यू आर नोटिंग द थिंग्स प्रॉपर्ली यू हैव मेड अ लॉन्ग नोटबुक द बायोलॉजी नोटबुक यस मैम ओके 
So now next period, I want you to keep the lab manual also ready. I have sent the message also this. So today in five minutes, I'll tell you that five experiments which you start recording. So as you wish, whenever you don't feel like studying anything, you can record those experiments. Start that work also. Okay, so now let us do Shanti Park. Oh, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Sai Ram, you can leave now. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma Sai Ram, ma'am. Sai Ram, Sai Ram.